YouTube, welcome to my channel, Anna Bella. I am going to be reviewing The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. This is the book by Suzanne Collins. It is the prequel to The Hunger Games and in fact explains a lot about President Snow and how the original trilogy affected him and why it affected him the way it did. This is a this is the book. I'm going to be re reviewing the movie. The movie is two hours and 38 minutes. Um, it comes out in 2023. I saw it last night and it is a 12A, though just a 12A because they cut away at certain scenes because had they shown some stuff that's in these books or implied or indirectly implied, it certainly would not be a 12A. Um, it would be heading to an R in some cases, not even a 15. Um, this book came out in 2022. So during the pandemic, as you can see here, and the film came out in 2023. So it is a pandemic movie. This is the film. Uh, this is the book. Sorry. <laughs> well, it might as well be the film. Um, and the film is uh, the film and the book are split into three parts. The first part is mentor. The second part is the arena. And then the third part, I forget. I'm going to have to flick through. I do like it, though. It's got cute little snakes on at the beginning of each chapter which is kind of cool, if I can find it. This is why pre-planning before we do a review is helpful. Anyway, there are songs in here that were translated very well over to the screen. Um, it is split into three parts. In fact, we even see the war and obviously the cannibalism. Spoilers for some. Um, what I would have liked to have seen in the first part, actually, Mentor, is more time and scenes with Snow's peers at the Academy, because I felt that was a little rushed, because we didn't care about them enough. And I know Snow doesn't, he's, he's using some of them, but it would have been nice to see their characters flourish, because what I think is important is both the Academy students and the tributes are being sacrificed for this development of the 10th Hunger Games. Um, because the stuff that happens during the 10th Hunger Games allows it to survive. Yes, we've got Peter Dinklage um, playing Dean Caster Highbottom, and also we've got the wonderful Vetta Davis playing the good doctor, or not so good doctor, but you get the feeling that she's a child in her mind with her milk and crackers. Yeah, um, there was a lot of diversity and representation in this movie. I know a lot of people have moaned about that, but they moan about everything. Um, but also I think that's another reason why the 10th Hunger Games actually gets erased in Pan Am, because they put a child with Down syndrome in the arena, and they also put a child with TB, and they call it basically TB on legs in the arena, whereas I think in later seasons they're not going to do that, because that's just a bit bonkers, because obviously people want to watch and invest. Um, I also think that all of the tributes had a thing that they weren't going to go for that particular child, the youngest one with Down syndrome, because it was interesting that she was just sort of left, um, whilst everybody else was sort of slaughtering each other, she was just left to hide and people weren't necessarily bothered because they didn't want to get into that moral quagmire. quagmire. Interesting, because I never, mentioned, never um, saw that in the book. Could be there, maybe I missed it, but I think you would have noticed. Um, also, it was interesting that the Academy students are wearing, wearing both trousers and skirts. I thought that was very interesting, like a kilt round. Yeah, that was interesting in itself. So there was some good things. I also liked the fact that it felt very 1960s early TV with the little cube screens that they had. That was really good because that's what um, the author is trying to invoke. This is very, very early days for all of the technology. I'm loving the fact that drones were used as... Um, weapons it's like hey you can't use the drones so you did get that i really enjoyed um, the arena section and the mentor section um to be fair it's the second it's the third section that is grating when they're out back in district 12 and everybody's supposed to sort of like be young adulting and doing it rather badly i also felt that some more time with some of the other characters like sir janus would have been nice if they'd had scenes without snow or lucy gray beard but obviously they wanted to move the plot along but you felt that L snow and lucy gray were the main characters because they are and everybody else revolves around them but actually what the others are offering is really important and it's very interesting to note that dean caster highbottom was um Coralina snow's father's best friend but also his Sir Janus um, as well so yes it's interesting it's fascinating you can see why 
the Hanging Tree song has become what it has and how it's affected Snow. I also like the fact that whilst Lucy was singing a love song about Snow to him, he left the room, he didn't, he recognised it, but he chose to leave and that's what set off the chain reaction to everything else falling apart. I love the fact that it showed his grandma with that metal mesh on her head like a helmet and showed actually she had claws um, regarding the districts. I love that and I like the fact that one of the main things that I think Lucy Gray attracted Snow was the fact that her dress was colourful so she looked capital, she didn't look district even though she was Covey which is I guess slang for travelling person in this. Um, Overall, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was really good. But one criticism of it was you can clearly tell it was like a, you know, you get those um, children's preschool picture books. Well, it felt that this had been turned into a visual picture book to watch. So some English teacher somewhere will get the class to read this book and then they will stop and play each scene, scene by scene, as they do with the with the first Hunger Games. Um, you can definitely tell that this film and book have been marketed so you can do that um, should you want but this book actually makes a lot of sense and it when you compare the obviously Hunger Games, Catching Fire and Mockingjay they really do connect with this book and this book just puts President Snow into perspective because I see President Snow and Lucy Greybeard as like a prototype for Peter and Katniss because you have um, Lucy Greybeard and Snow in a meadow uh, in the third act of this book and film. And in the end of the whole of The Hunger Games, you have a blonde-headed boy and a dark-haired girl in a meadow with their children. And they're safe. So it's very interesting. And you also get the feeling that when Snow does die, um, he sets everything up to enable the future to not have any Hunger Games. Hence why he gets rid of coin or convinces Katniss to shoot coin. Um, and I think that that's very telling. It's almost like an apology after everything that he has done. But it's interesting that he sees himself as a victor, which means that he is also a tribute. So when he's talking about killing his, killing the tributes, what he really means is killing himself. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this review. Please like, comment and subscribe. And thanks for the support. Bye.